Before the break, we heard from Danielle, who wanted to know some great ways to drop pounds in a healthy way. And as you may know, our executive producer, Jay McGraw, has a publishing company. One of his authors is clinical nutritionist Cynthia Pasquella. Thanks for being here again, Thanks Cynthia. Thanks for having me. Good to see you guys. It's so awesome. Now, you have some health secrets. In the peak method, I talk about crap. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds <laughs> odd, so let me explain. It's a term, I say crap right? a lot. Crap. Very, very, very medical, medical term. Very medical. I don't think we'll it refers to terms. that, but I do say crap. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's an acronym. It stands for caffeine, mm -hmm. refined sugar, alcohol, and processed foods. And I have great substitutes for all those today. All right, so Beautiful. let's start with C. C. So C is for caffeine. Mm, now, coffee. caffeine, yes, coffee is one of the, the, the big things. And it's okay in small doses. So on mm -hmm. the pink method, for example, you can have a cup of coffee in the morning. Is cola too? You cannot have the cola in the morning. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought this might be well, one. It's <laughs> important to make a distinction here. And the distinction is that in moderation, coffee can be okay for you. But a lot of those other sources of caffeine, Dr. Lisa, I know. Not, so good <laughs> Not a good but, idea. Okay, so so what am I going to swap for my? So my instead cola? of having that, I've put together this amazing drink called pina colada with a side of green. Okay. So what we do is we take kale and spinach, which are super rich in fiber. They want to keep you full for hours. Mm -hmm. We throw in banana, coconut milk, little coconut water, great yummy foods like mango, pineapple, and dates. So we actually just put one date per drink because date is a natural energy booster. So if you're looking for that pick me up in the morning, get me Ooh. going, date is going to do it. And if you're so, used to sugar in your coffee, then that's going to give you that bitter sweetness that you feel like you're missing. And this is it. You want to give it a yes. try? Give it a try. Let's see pretty, how it is. A pina colada <laughs> in the morning. Go figure. It's really good. It actually tastes a lot like bananas. Chock full of nutrients. I love it. Definitely. And, and let me guess. As we move from C to R, you see we're working our way down crap. <laughs> <laughs> R stands probably for refined carbohydrates, refined sugars. Refined sugar, exactly. So let's take a look at this animation of a woman who's enjoying a little piece of cake. Nothing wrong with that, right? right. Well, no. if you're doing this too often, something happens in your body that you're not going to like so much. So as she's enjoying the cake, the saliva is starting to work on the digestive process. It works its way down into the stomach. Woo, taste buds are dancing. <laughs> Things are good. Cake. Love and life. And you know what we're going to do here? We're going to go straight to her brain because as these carbohydrates and sugars are hitting her mouth and getting digested, the brain's pleasure centers are lighting up saying, Woo! <laughs> Sugar tastes so good! It does. Give me more! <laughs> but your pancreas doesn't love it so much because you see those, those, those white molecules are sugar. Your pancreas secretes more and more insulin to shepherd that sugar into your body's cells. But when you have more carbohydrate than you need, more than you need for your activities of daily living, to think, to exercise, the insulin does something else quite interesting. What it does is it actually tells your body to store fat. Oh. That's why when you're eating too many sugars, it does end up as fat. Typically, wow. a lot of it will be visceral fat. That's the fat that surrounds your internal organs. People think, well, if it's just sugar, that's fine. No, sugar, actually too much of it, will end up turning to fat in your body. And some people may not realize that sugar is in everything these days, Dr. Mm -hmm. Travis. Like mayonnaise, crackers, who would have thought? Pasta, pasta sauce. Pasta sauce? Mm -hmm. Some pasta sauces can have up to five teaspoons of sugar per half a cup serving. That's crazy. Isn't that unbelievable? Mm -hmm. So I created a, a super easy swap, and I call it my simple, sexy spaghetti sauce. You'll love Ooh, this. Okay. Sounds I like good. the name already. Right? Yeah, I like the name. I'll take it. Very few ingredients. It's so easy to make. It has tomatoes. Here are all of the ingredients, a little bit of olive oil. Oil, a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic, onions, oregano, basil, some herbs. Essentially, all you do is throw all of this in a pot, let it cook for 30 to 45 minutes, and you're good to go. And here it is. It looks yeah. good. You want to try it? Yes. Let sexy. me try it. Let's see. And, and, and as Daniel's yeah. trying it, I just want to add that if you are going to buy pre made sauce, mm -hmm. read the ingredient list because yes. you hit the nail yes. on the head. Some of it you'll read and be like, what? Corn syrup? Exactly. First, second <laughs> ingredient? Well, and that's, that's the actually thing. really good. 
Well, what a lot of people like with Italian food is alcohol. Yes. yes. Alcohol is essentially sugar in the body. There's no difference. So what I've created is a mocktail of a mint julep. It's super simple. You want to have some water, some mint sprigs, um, a little bit of pre-made lemonade, which you're just going to make with water, an agave nectar or a, a stevia sweetener, some For lemon. Yep, and Got you're it. all done. Now the, the the great secret in this is the mint, because studies have shown that mint actually relaxes the body, relaxes the muscles, relieves stress, and helps with anxiety. So similar to the effects of alcohol, the, the stress relief She's is why you're doing yes. exactly. So <laughs> That's exactly the right. about the alcohol, because usually it's the sugar and the alcohol that's going to contribute to that. Exactly. Ever? What's the P for? P is for processed foods. A huge processed food that I see people eating a lot of is chicken nuggets. I don't know what it is about chicken nuggets. They're easy. People think it's like this nice white meat, lightly breaded, but it's all parts of the chicken, the organs, the skin, Ew. flour, starches, oils, fats. Gross. It's anything but healthy. So I created this great little recipe that you'll see here, and it's called, I can't believe I'm eating chicken nuggets on a diet. We use pecans, which are okay. a, a monosaturated fat, so they actually help you get rid of some of that belly fat. Awesome. Um, we also use whole wheat flour in here. One. Just some spices to give a little flavor. No fat. We bake them for a few minutes, and there you go. So we're going to start then with, th this is processed C-R-A-P. This is crap. <laughs> right? So why don't you exactly. start throwing out some C-R-A-P? Yes. You're looking, Cindy, this is just all the processed stuff. This is just stuff. All, Listen, all the crap. Start okay, throwing it out. This is nothing but no. fat Goodbye, on crap. your tummy and your tail. It's, it's right. no good. I'll take that. Okay, uh, good. Have that. <laughs> <laughs> so, crap. You need to get aggressive. You just need just to grab and just own it. Throw it in there all crap. at once. Get rid of all that crap. Oh, it feels oh, good. Oh, oh, right. Say goodbye Woo. to all that crap. <laughs> from sculpting a beautiful body to avoiding diabetes down the road. Stick with us.